Horses more than he needs for his entourage. So the purist says, Kedema Kavtoi to lead it. A philosus erod ponui liyo is ros the fonov, even that one horse to be running in front of him, Kedel Shoisim Shaham Lochim, as do other kings, also is forbidden. In Moisif, he adds, like he receives lashes because he transgressed the negative prohibition, which is found in Zvorm. 1716. Amma mentioned it in the beginning of Hilz Malochim, and that is the fourth mitzvah. He has the mission sites in Sanhedrin, Torah Abonam, Racham Lent, You should not add horses. Yochel Shagam Susan Lutzer, Makav, Toy, Porsche, Osolo, Boys. I might think that even horses for the needs of his. Uh, his entourage and his army is forbidden. That's why it says the word loy, meaning for himself he can't, but he can do it for the needs of the army. And you don't have horses that are not doing anything. How do I know even one uh, horse extra? He transgresses because it says the man habaisus, just for the, without, now, without need. That's a, in 1716. Even one. And since one's was is forbidden, uh, he transgresses. Why is it saying susim? Why is it saying the plural? Rather than a singular horse to tell us that each horse that he adds he, is a different transgression. And Jesus explained that if it would be written, he shouldn't have more one horse, he would be transgress. On many horses, only one transgression. If it was a Susan to tell you that he transgresses on each and every horse, that he adds that it's without need. Because the Mishnah adds, according to the Gemara, it's forbidden to add only Susan that are not doing anything, horses that are not doing anything. The other one was careful to write, Ponui, that it's without need to run before him. But if he needs it, uh, he's allowed to. The question is why the Ram answer, it, it, right in the Ramam, right, that he gets lashes for every single horse that he, he transgresses a separate prohibition. Rashi and Tezus bring that there are a text in the that of the Gemara that said to transgress a positive commandment and a negative commandment. Tezus explained going to this text. The question of the Gemara is why does it say do not, the prohibition already says he should not bring, if he adds horses, he'll bring the, he'll bring the people back to Egypt to add horses. The Gemara answers to transgress the, the positive commandment of in order to add horses. And the negative command that he's not permitted to is a, sec, a separate prohibition. With the Rashi, uh, negates this text and Tesis explain that you don't have that wording because uh, to add horses is not a commandment by itself it's a cl clarification of what is the reason why there's a forbiddenness to have horses so that you should not take the people back to Mitzrayim. Knesset Gedolim is brought down Seif Alekutim Vadil Dachaya on uh, mitzvahs from Balkness is Agdoila, a site that Rabbi Inu Yeshaya uh, quotes the Mimigash, the Rebbe of the Rambam, <coughs> did have such a text. According to this text, therefore, we don't learn from Susan that you transgress on every horse, and therefore the Rambam left it out. And as Agdoila, in the Chaya, push off this statement, since the Rambam did not count this positive commandment that you're not allowed to add horses, but only the negative commandment, and therefore we didn't have this text. The Ravaz says that if the Ram didn't mention that a king transgresses on every horse that he has that's extra, because he did not have our text. And furthermore, he answers that he left it out because there's no difference. If he bought a lot of horses one after the other and they wanted them on each one, 
it's obvious that he gets lashes on each one. Like the Rambam says, if he adds, he gets lashes. If he bought many of them one, at one time, he would only get one time lashes on the purchase, even though he transgresses on each horse with a prohibition, because the rest of it is without an action. And what the Gemara states in order to transgress on each horse, the intent is that he transgresses a negative omission, but not that he gets lashes on every horse by itself when he purchases them simultaneously. The Ma'ach Abulafia points out, in Halacha Beis he writes that if he added one wife and he had a relationship with her, and then he, he gets lashes for each woman, even though uh, we don't find uh, the additional word of plural and singular to tell us that he gets, he receives lashes for each transgression. The question is why, by horses, Gemara has to add because of the fact that it says a plural. He would not be transgressed on each horse. And uh, he explains that a woman, you don't need a special additional passage in the Torah, but according to the Rambam, you receive lashes only when he had a relationship with her. Therefore, each action is a separate action. If by a woman, there's no need for a statement in the Torah. But by horses, if you buy each horse separately, he'll get lashes for each horse. And from the post, we learn that when he purchased a lot of horses with one action, he transgressed many transgression. He only gets receives lashes once, like any other prohibition. That for one one action, one you only receive one lashes, even though he did transgress on many by buying many horses on on the prohibition many times. So there's no difference for actually halakhically what the story is in our world, but in the world above there is. Never the Rambam left it out. Adina Nechaya adds that his brother inferred from a brisa that it only said he transgresses a prohibition on every horse. It doesn't say he gets he receives lashes on every horse, as as is indicated by the Rambam here, that uh, the Rambam is careful to write whether you get lashes, and sometimes he writes transgresses, and here he writes he didn't mention. Transgress uh, lashes because you don't get, you do not receive lashes for each horse, you receive for each transaction, whether it's one horse or ten horses. Now, what Maracha uh, Yafi mentioned that a king who purchased many, uh, many horses at one time receives just one time punishment is difficult. Why shouldn't he receive lashes on every horse? Because they are separate physical bodies. It's more the Torah forbade to exchange one animal, of a secular animal, uh, that should become sanctified instead, in this, in the stead of an animal that's already sanctified. Little Smur, he writes, and so, so one who does so, uh, he gets lashes according to the number of animals that he did. Uh, try to substitute both whether he did one animal or a hundred animals or one hundred animals with one animal. It goes according to that number whether he did it with one action or one after the other because they're, they're, each animal is a separate uh, body, a physical body. Because in, in actuality what he did with that one action is he caused many animals to have a certain halakha fall on them even though it all happens simultaneously, therefore it is, uh, but it takes simultaneously, it affects so many animals, therefore for each animal you transgress. The Mishnah Lamela, from the Elsie Sorebia, cites from Ben Yeshayo, the Riyaz, that the idea of separate bodies is only by loving uh, things. And questions, Mishnah Mish Lamela, questions from Hilfa Shkogois, chapter 6, Halofa Beis. Somebody who slaughters an, an animal outside the Azor, he's liable for chorus, and unintentionally so, he has to bring a sin offering. And the halacha is that he, he slaughtered five outside the Azor with one 
um, Hela Marcos with one forgetfulness, which would be unintentionally so, he's liable only one sin offering. The question is, wait a second, he did five animals, so therefore he should be liable five times. The Dibri Emma's question is why a king who bought many horses at one time, why shouldn't he get lashes for each horse? Because they're separate physical bodies. And the answer is that the opinion of the Rambam is that a king receives uh, lashes on every horse because they're separate bodies. And he didn't explain it here because he relied on what he wrote in Hilda's Tamura that, that one does receive lashes on separate bodies. Therefore, that uh, according to the, though he, this opinion in the that the Rambam would would be would take the position that a king who purchased at one time many horses would receive lashes on each horse, and I like the revise and the Mahavalafia they'll only receive it one time because there's only one action. The Chekre Lev, near Adeya, the Chalkis question why the Gimor in Sanhedrin 21a needed a special passage that he transgresses on, the, on every horse. We learn it from the idea of separate physical bodies. And he makes the following distinction, that with a forbiddenness like Tmura, we exchange one animal for the other, or someone has a relationship with an animal, or he slaughtered uh, the mother and the child in one day, an animal, or he slaughtered five uh, offerings outside of the Azorah. The forbiddenness is be because of the animal, and therefore it's separate bodies. But when the, the, the forbiddenness is not in the animal, only in the action that one does by purchasing in horses, therefore the king, when he purchased many together, you don't say separate bodies, because the, the action of the king is only one action. It depends which way it goes. And the Chakulev agrees to the Divri Hermes, that according to the Ramah, the king would only would receive uh, uh, lashes for horses only if he bought them one by one. The Chalkas adds that you need a passage because the forbiddenness is, on, is not only by our horses, by certain horses, but in general, he transgresses on the passage uh, where it says, Do not have many horses. On each horse that he qu acquires, we can say he needs it for his uh, entourage. Therefore, without this special post, he would only transgress once. Therefore, the post teaches us. Every individual horse causes the king to transgress again. The Avni Neza, the, the Rebbe of the Chalkas Yoya, writes in the Truva, the reason it's forbidden is because of not bringing the people possibly back to Egypt to have more horses. It teaches us that even if he purchased many horses, he transgresses only on one transgression. It causes the people to return to Egypt. And he explains that the idea of separate physical bodies is only when the forbiddenness is by the woman or the animal like the Chek is the same distinction and taking the poor people back is only on the animal is not on the animal it's only on the king therefore he would only be punished for the action that he did whether it's one or many and that's the opinion of the Mithra as well that he receives lashes not for the horses or horse but for the action that he purchased and then the questions Brothers bought him a horse, and and they caused it to run before him, like slaves that do so for their kings. If the king receives ma receives lashes because he transgresses on the negative commandment uh, without doing an action. And on a, on a negative commandment, that there's no action, you do not receive lashes. And he explains that even though what others purchase for him, he doesn't receive lashes because he didn't do an action at, at the time of purchase. But if the king does an action that uh, he leaves the horse that is tired because he's riding it, and he goes to another horse he, that was given to him, he would receive 
clashes. The source of his words are dependent upon what the text we find in Sanhedrin the way we have it in 21a. The Brisa says you should not add even for his entourage. Therefore, it says Lloyd for himself he can't add, or for the entourage he can. There are no questions. And if it wouldn't be written loy, which is for him, even for his entourage would be forbidden. And Rashi explains, a melech without an army is not very, very uh, effective. The more answer is that it means to tell you that Rashi explains that the poser comes to permit that he should have chariots and warriors and horses as much as he shouldn't be stingy. He should have as many as he needs. And he proves this from Rashi. It's, it has the text La Fuchi rather than La Fushi. The, the way of a king is to go on one horse when he's pulling another horse. And at times he rides on the other one so that the other, they, uh, to cause the first one to be rested or to be calmed down. The Dean of the says, one can explain the, the concept of the Gemara La Fuchi. To exchange in two ways. One, it's forbidden him to have many horses, even when the second horse is there, so he'll be able to re ride it when his first horse becomes tired or temperamental. The other way we can understand it for him is that I might think that he could add and, uh, and not to exchange. Loy comes to tell you that it's permitted for a king. Uh, to exchange because uh, and he would not transgress on that it's not called an ex extra horse therefore in the language of the Rambam the Yavali Susan only for what he needs he one horse to be ready to run for him as other kings that do is forbidden is not necessarily the case and uh, we're not sure which way the Rambam would explain this because we can understand from the Rambam that it would be permitted, we can understand it would not be permitted. According to the Nea Mitzvah, the text should be La Hafuchi, and that means that forbidden to the king should he should have another horse to ride when the first one becomes tired. And the Chaya proves that we find this in Pirish and Mishnayas. The explanation of Mishnayas is that this was his text that has permitted him to have one horse to ride on it, just like everybody else. And we shouldn't have another one in order to rest the first one, that the Torah forbade him to have horses without need in the in the shed, ready to be ridden when he wants to, or to have them uh, be leading in front of him like other kings, and for other people there was no horses to exchange. Therefore, that the Nehemiah Mitzvah is correct, and if he did so, the king did so he gets lashes for not for the transgression of not, not being permitted to have horses without need